Michael Frankel. It's fight week for LFA 62. An interim bantamweight title is on the line. Miles Johns is injured. And now we're going to talk to short notice replacement jumping in there. The interim flyweight champion, Casey Kenny, who looks to become the first ever LFA two division champion. Casey, thanks for the time. How you doing, man? Oh, of course, anytime, man. I'm doing great. How about yourself? Doing well on this Sunday. Couple days out from the fight. How you doing? Uh, uh, I got a fight that, uh, this coming week, so I'm doing great. You know, uh, I enjoy fight week. I, this is what I do, man. So uh, when they called, I was like, sign me up. You know, I've been in shape. I've been ready. Why not be a champ champ? Now, I heard first off that when this fight was announced, you already kind of threw it out there. If anybody's injured, call me up. Is that true? <laughs> I, actually, I did. Uh, I sent him, uh, I went back to my uh, Facebook messages and like LSA had a Facebook uh, story and I uh, just commented. I was laying in bed real late at night and saw that they were doing that. Uh, I think like, I think it was February 15th. I just said, hey, uh, I'm ready you now. If you need, someone falls off, give me a call. And they did. Did you think there was any possibility when you throw your hat in the ring like that that it may actually come true? Oh, I mean, there's always a possibility that someone's going to pull off and why not be, you know, somebody, or why not bring somebody in that's already a champion in your organization? So, I mean, yes and no. I mean, I really didn't expect it. I was like, it took me a second to remember that. I even, you know, told them that uh, like a month before, but... Uh, you know, it's it's bound to happen. You know, shoot, I had a replacement same, about the same time um, uh, for my title fight. So, you know, it, it happens. Right, how does it feel now? Shoe on the other foot. Mikel Perez dropped out. You took on Brandon Royval. He was the short notice replacement. This time, it's you taking on that short ro- uh, notice replacement role. Right, uh... Honestly, dude, I'd rather be in this spot than the other way around. You know, the other way around, it's like, whatever, I'm ready to fight. But I just did, like, you know, for instance, I did an eight-week camp to prepare for an Olympic wrestler. And then I fought a long, lanky striker, jujitsu guy, you know, opposite stance. <laughs> so, like, I mean, not that any of my training was lost, but any type of preparation that, you know, I, like, as far as, like, game planning for a wrestler, um, that kind of went out the window. Um, not, it, I, guess you, I guess you get what I'm saying. Like, it's not really lost, but I did a lot of stuff that was pretty much pointless. Right. Talking about that victory at LFA 53, was that a, a game plan on the fly made up for Brandon Royval? Yeah, yes and no, you know, the wrestling kind of came out uh, just because, one, I exposed him with that uh, after I, you know, I dropped him and we kind of went to the ground and I realized how big of a dominance I could have on the ground. Um, You know, the game plan wasn't necessarily to go out and take him down, but, you know, we got into that little, where I rocked him and he hit me with the spinning elbow exchange and we went to the ground. You know, I come back, basically went from submission to submission and uh came back and my coaches were like hey dude you can own this guy on the ground you know um still went out and stood on my feet for a little while and you know took my time to get him back down but um one preparing for an olympic wrestler those motor skills were kind of just already in there and two uh you know that's where i kind of exposed him you know i think i'm one of the most complete mixed martial artists on the planet so if you got a hole and i see it it's going to be a long night for you. Easiest thing for you was taking the path of least resistance? Right. You know, and I mean, I was still in there throwing bombs and stuff. I love that type of fight. That's the type of fight I love to be in. But, uh, you know, that's why I got good coaches in my corner to say, hey, dude, uh, just double leg him. You know, uh, one, you can take him down. Two, you're going to control him. We've seen the last couple fights. There's been 25, 30, 35. Does weight class matter to you? Uh, not really, man. You know, I've been cutting weight for a long time, and 
unless someone's got a shitload of dollar signs in front of me, I I really don't like cutting weight. You know, I mean, not that. Uh, oh, let's put it this way: I I gotta still make a little bit of a weight cut. You know, I got like fifteen pounds instead of twenty five or thirty. You know, for twenty five, uh, which is I talk about it stealing my soul. You know, it's uh it's a it's a real deal weight cut. You know, everything's gotta go as planned. My diet's gotta be on point. Um, not that it's not on point right now, but it's a little uh, more manageable on point diet than for 25, trying to train and push the last little bit. So it goes from 35 is you have to be very disciplined to where 25 is nearly unbearable? Yeah, you know, exactly. Uh, I guess we're, um, you know, it's just like cutting the carbs and the low energy stuff at 25 where I got to, you know, um, I guess run on minimal fuel to make weight plus also train uh, at a high intensity to, you know, kind of end camp type of thing. Um, that's where, you know, it gets, it's not necessarily fun. And then, you know, obviously the last like 10 pound weight, but that extra 10 pounds is, you know, it's, it's not fun at all. You know, sometimes you dread fight week, sometimes you, you're all for it. Um, the only reason I would dread fight week ever was, for the weight, you know, the, the weight cut, uh, not really dread it just cause you know, you want to get it over with, but it's like, damn, I got to make this weight cut before anything else happens. Um, now it's like, oh, I got to make a little, little bit of a weight cut, but it's not going to almost kill me. And for where you're at right now, outside perspective, we saw you pick up that interim title. So most people would be expecting either a unification, possibly a defense, maybe getting called up to that next level. But here you are going for history in LFA, picking up that second bell, obviously taking the opportunities that presented itself, but have you had any uh, intentions or thoughts of possibly attempting this feat pro uh, prior to getting the offer? Uh, you know, I, I th I've thought about it. Really, uh, defending my belt was, you know, I, I'm the flyweight champion. Michael Perez, he probably saw that fight, and I haven't heard a word from him since. Uh, you know, so he probably doesn't want that fight. I'm the LFA champ, flyweight champion. You know, Michael Perez is in the past. Uh, kind of what's happened with, you know, the UFC and the flyweight division and all that stuff. I already knew I was going to be uh, bumping up to 35. I was hoping maybe I could get a straight shot into the UFC at 35, but um, instead of sitting around maybe getting that short notice call, uh, you know, I'm going to go make my claim at 35 and snatch what's you know supposed to be one of the top belts out there outside of the UFC. And now, just a moment ago, you mentioned you'd rather be in this predicament. So what are the advantages of you've already been in the gym, but you didn't necessarily have a fight book in taking this, being in this position, taking the fight on short notice versus where you were at last time, being the guy that had already trained? What are the advantages of being in this position? Oh man, just really uh, not having to to beat up your body for a whole title fight camp. You know, I feel like I'm completely a hundred percent title fight uh, ready as far as in shape and you know ready to fight. But I, I didn't really have to do the whole camp. I just kind of you know stayed picking at, picking away at things and just kind of staying ready. But I didn't ever really overdid it. Um, and two, just, uh, man, I'm having fun, you know, I'm having fun. I get to go in and do that. Uh, you know, all the pressure's on uh, the guy that's been training for a long time and, you know, was supposed to be the top contender. And now, you know, they're bringing in another guy short notice that he has no idea whether he's been training, not training. Uh, I guess there's just too many factors to go into it. But I, I like being this guy, I guess, uh, you know, um, one, I get to come in and save the car, too, and, you know, look to make history. I like to do those type of things. Vince Cachera, your opponent, what are some thoughts? What have you learned about him over these last couple days? Uh, you know, he's going to come forward. He's going to come to fight. You know, he's not going to back up a whole lot, which um, that's the perfect fight I've been looking for. So uh, it's the kind of fight I like to be in. Um, you know, he's going to throw some big punches. And his grappling's pretty good. And, uh, you know, other than that, he uh, he's good. But, 
I, I don't think it's his time. You know, this is uh, what I consider his first real test. You know, a couple other guys that are so-so, but, you know, I'm, uh, I'm on another level. You know, the last uh, seven, eight guys I fought have been almost UFC caliber, and, you know, I took it to all of them, so uh, I'll be ready. But, you know, Vince, he's a, you know, he's a big puncher, tough grappler. I, you know, I've seen it a million times, so uh, got a few things up my sleeve for him. You have twice as many pro fights, and you can really talk about it. He has six, and the last six you have had have been against some monsters. So, how can you turn how how do you turn experience into that big of a factor that you can use it as? Uh, you know, uh, like I told someone the other day, uh, you know, like like you said, you know, my my last seven fights have been pretty much, you know, I was. 5-0 and oh, fighting for the Tachi title, which could have been my UFC contract. You know, my last six, seven fights have been for what, you know, people may consider a UFC contract. Like, that's a lot of pressure. Uh, at, at this point, I'm ice cold with that pressure, you know, twice on the Contender Series, you know, going for my third world title. Like, I'm, I've been in that situation a ton of times. And uh, we'll see how he handles the pressure, you know. Um, I'm sure he's a game competitor. He's, he showed up to fight. Uh, you know, all these other times, I don't see it being anything different. But you know, that's a that's a lot. That's a big weight for somebody to carry. That's uh, up and coming. You know, I remember when I was five, six, and zero. Oh, um, I thought I was ready for the UFC top ten. Now I'm really ready for the UFC top ten. Over those last seven fights that have been very testing, very trying. We've seen six of, the, six of them go the judges and two of them with controversial marks on your record. Has that soured you at all to taking a fight to the distance and, as Dana White likes to say, leaving it in the judges' hands? Right. Um, you know, it, all those fights I obviously was not. You know, before the five of my uh, first six fights were finishes. Uh, you know, I'm a finisher. I, uh, I've, I've rocked at least one of these, or every one of these guys at least once or had him in a submission hold or, you know, I wasn't that decision guy that, you know, goes and lays on top of somebody for three rounds or five rounds or however long it is. Like every single one of those fights that went the distance, like, uh, you know, I, I've hit them with some nasty shots. I've rocked them, you know, I dropped them, uh, had their back, had them in a, you know, a nasty choke or something like that. Um, Close doesn't cut it in this sport, but if you're getting close, it's only a matter of time before uh, you know those guys go out or I get that submission. And when you're fighting, you know, like you said, monsters or guys that are fighting for the same thing that I'm fighting for, you know, sometimes they're hard to put away. Uh, you know, you look at Antle and I hit him with at, on the Contender series. I hit him with some nasty shots for you know the whole fight, and then his next two fights he goes and gets knocked out with like a touch or jab. You know, um, it's just, sometimes it's a roll of the dice. What would it mean to you to make history, to get that second LFA belt wrapped around your waist? Oh, man, it, you know, it's going to it make my claim in the, the Bantamweight division. You know, I feel like I've done that in the flyweight division. Um, knocked off Ramon Salazar before I got the flyweight title last, so... I've already kind of stepped up in there, you know, the UFC bed, a true bantamweight. Um, but this, I think, is uh, my my homecoming to bantamweight, I guess, like to let everybody know that I'm here. Um, I'm here, and I'm here to stay, and whatever happens after, I'm okay with it. You know, if, it, if it's to the UFC, it's to the UFC. If it's not, you know, I'll keep knocking people down as long as I need to. And then real quick, if you can touch on it a little bit, can you get into what the formula was for this camp? It's it's a small time, so how do you compact what you need to into it and formulate a game plan? Um, you know, I took a couple, watched a couple videos of Vince, and, you know, I was kind of already ready to go, <laughs> you know. I, I don't like to sit and, you know, pick and pick and pick at my opponent's. Uh, you know, I get a good look on how they move, what their tendencies are, but, you know, I, I don't get too caught up in what they're doing. You know, I really focus on what I'm doing and then make just, you know, a little, few little adjustments to what I'm doing. 
judging by, you know, how they're going to move, what they're going to throw. Uh, once I did that, honestly, I was ready, like, first, second day. I, I knew I was going to be fighting, probably before anybody even heard about it. Uh, you know, I was I had a game plan, um, ready to rock, you know. And, and the game plan is not necessarily, like, all right, I got to do this and this because it's a fight. You know, anything can happen. I got a I got a very broad game plan. Like, all right, if I go here, I go here. You know, I go here, I go here. If this happens, this happens. Um, and then just as, as generally as much as, uh, like, times a day you were training and as much as training you were getting, you were already working as if you were in camp mode? Yeah, I mean, I'm training once, twice a day six, seven days a week, uh, all the time. You know, I've been, the UFC, they called me when I was 5-0, and uh, before my first Tachi fight, and I've kind of been in that, hey, stay ready, uh, you know, on deck circle for pretty much then, and, you know, I've taken little breaks here and there, like after fights, but two, three weeks after I win a fight, it's like, hey, I could be getting a UFC call, a short notice call. And, you know, I've had a couple close calls, uh, and I was ready. I've said yes to all of them. So, uh, you know, I've just been ready, man. Just been ready. And, you know, in the fight world, that's a good thing. Right. Better to stay ready than have to get ready. Exactly. Friday night, it's LFA 62. Casey Kenny looks to make history. You got some keys. That you, I know you can't share too much of your game plan, but you got some keys of things that'll be pivotal in this fight. Yeah, you know, uh, just establishing, you know, my range, kind of establishing the pace of the fight. Um, you know, not letting uh, Vince come out and bully me. I mean, you know, he's uh, he moves forward, throws big punches, grapples. He's kind of um, you know a bully fighter. Regardless, and you know, uh, myself coming up from a smaller weight class, I'm sure that's something in his head, you know, what he wants to do. So, you know, I guess just uh, not get bullied around and keep keep moving my feet, and I'll be good to go. Casey, can you tell everybody how they can keep up with you on social media? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you can follow me at CKMMA125. I uh, may have to change that here soon, actually. 125 at, uh, on Instagram and Twitter, and then um, Casey Kinney on Facebook. You got people that you need to thank a shout-out to? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, always got to thank uh, the people that are behind the scenes, uh, you know, the, the people that make it happen. You know, my coach, uh, Chris Carriasso at Rise Combat Sports, and all those guys over there. And then also John Crouch and, you know, all the guys at the MMA lab um, wouldn't be ready all the time if it wasn't for both of those camps. And, uh, you know, of course, my management at Reading Sports Agency, you know, Jason and Jeremy over there helping me out, making sure I get these uh, short notice fights. And, uh, you know, also one of my uh, sponsors that I brought along, uh, Miss Mary Jane California, the CBD company, um, got some great stuff, check them out. Then also touch on it real quick. Is the driving hard? I know you commute between two gyms. Is that driving hard? Uh, sometimes. I'm used to it now. Um, you know, it's a it's a couple hour drive, but you know, it's it's worth every second. Uh, I never, you know, I never think that. Oh man, I'm wasting my time driving around. Um, and I guess if you have that mentality. That's when, you know, the training's not really worth it, worth it, and the drive kind of becomes, you know, a pain. Um, but uh, I'm loving everything I'm getting from both, so I'm going to keep doing my thing. Great, great. Again, everybody, Access TV, Friday night, LFA 62. If you're in the Dallas area, it's at the Bomb Factory. You should be there. Again, Casey, I appreciate you so much taking some time out of your Sunday to give me a little chat. Oh, yeah, of course, man. Anytime. You have a good one, sir. Hey, you too.